What's up guys, Smashbeans here and welcome to a new video. Now, are you guys like me? Every new Minecraft world you load up, you look for that plains biome and you get building your house. Leaving all those other biomes to be sad and alone. Well, today we are going to give those biomes some love as I show you five builds for five different biomes. And none of them are plains biomes. Now our first biome is the roofed forest. I know what you're thinking, Joel, why would I build in a roofed forest? The trees are ugly. The trees are everywhere. And it's just so uneven. Well, that's what I used to think too, until today when we started building in this roofed forest. Now I decided to stick with the theme of the forest and make it fit in with the forest. So roofed forest, you think dark oak and you think mushrooms. Well, that's what I'm going to build, a massive mushroom house. Now with all of these builds, I'm going to show you the interior and the exterior of how you could actually use this as a house. Of course I'm using creative, but you could build this in survival properly, it would just take a long time and a lot of effort. But let's just focus on the building for now. So obviously I'm making a massive mushroom here, I'm using quartz I believe for the bottom part and then I'm using red concrete for the top with some white glass you'll see in a little bit for the little spores, I think they're called, on the top of the mushroom. With a birch plank for that little bottom bit of the mushroom as well. I also added some glowstone in there at a later date so it lights up and is not dark and dingy. Which is my pet peeve with builds is when there's massive dark spots. I have to have everything lit up and lovely and not dark and gloomy because we're trying to make this forest biome full of life and mushrooms are life, aren't they? I don't know what I'm saying anymore, I'm just rambling. But the idea of this build is that you're looking out across the roofed forest. You are standing out amongst all the same looking trees with this massive mushroom. And this build is very livable for a house. I had this curved staircase up here, although it's kind of square because it's Minecraft but it's meant to be a curved staircase, which is very easy to navigate upwards. And of course I have a chandelier added in as well because every mushroom needs a chandelier, that's what Sia says at least. For the outside I made a cute little path leading up to the mushroom, winding through the trees. I used the trees as an advantage here and made this cute little passage with lots of flowers and stuff. As for the inside, I stuck with the mushroom theme as you'll see in a second by adding a mushroom styled carpet. For the inside also I tried to make it as realistic as possible so I added all the things that you'd need like furnaces, crafting tables and stuff like that to make this as homely and realistic as a Minecraft house as possible. I wanted these to be livable and useful. Uh, apart from the top floor there is some weird stuff in here because all you really need is a bed and like a chest room but instead I added in some grass and some garden bits which were just for decoration but it looked nice. It was a big space I needed to fill it out and I added a pond. Why not? It's a mushroom. Nature, that's what I'm talking about. But I also added in some things like an anvil, a crafting table up here as well, so you wouldn't have to go all the way downstairs to use it. Those ones downstairs are just for when you're wandering about and you needed to add some stuff in. But here is the final build. As you can see, it stands out amongst all the plain roofed forest. The lead up to this place is really cute and when you head inside, you've got plenty of furnaces, chests, crafting table, anvil, things that you'd need in the house and you can head up the stairs which may make you a little bit dizzy, as it is quite a long way, but when you get here it is wonderful. Full of light because of all the glass and plenty of storage, with all the things you need as well. And look at the view you have from everywhere, it's just lovely isn't it? Who said root forests couldn't be awesome? I did at one point, but now I'm saying they're okay. Our next biome is the swamp biome, but Joel, why would I build in a swamp biome? There's just water randomly everywhere. The colours are so ugly. And don't witches live there? Ooh. You're correct, witches do live there. However, Shrek also lives there and Shrek is awesome, let's be real, we all know Shrek is awesome. And swamps, even though they have the water grass floor which can be annoying to manoeuvre over sometimes, you can improvise by adding planks in there, making paths for yourselves, it really makes it look really nice. Also, because you're so close to water, you can have a dock and then you can have a boat at the end of the dock and that's instant ocean that you can travel out into for when you go and find those shipwrecks and ocean monuments. 
and anything else you want to find on the ocean. It also means you can bring dolphins really close to you, okay? As you can see here, I'm doing a sort of three-tiered house, lots of roofs. I also add a decking on so that I can stand outside and look across the ocean. And I also add a boating dock, as you'll see here, with a little boat at the end so I can go out on my journeys. I went with a darker themed wood for this one, going for the spruce. Although spruce doesn't originate in a swamp biome, it fits with the colours quite nicely, I thought. And spruce is my favourite wood to build with. I don't know, I just like the colour, okay? I don't know why, I just do. So of course I had to use my favourite colour wood in the swamp biome, the home of Shrek. It's not a very big house, so the interior is very minimal, which I kind of like. Got a nice little table there. Green, of course. Swamp, Shrek, you know where I'm going with this. And also all the things you will need, plus a little bedroom upstairs as well, which is quite quaint, but I like it. Also changing the bed to green because green is awesome. And here it is, the swamp house with a mix of lily pads and planks letting you walk all the way up. It's very homely inside here. We've got a nice seat, a nice table to eat our dinner on and of course a quaint bedroom, suit of armor, everything we need. The porch is quite minimalistic but you have a fence all around here so you're nice and well protected and you can head out in your boat on the ocean destroying lily pads as you go. So there it is. The Swamp House. Next up, we have the Jungle Biome. But Joel, the jungle is a mess. Mobs can appear from around the corner. The trees are so high, you cannot see what's coming to get you. Whilst that might be true, we can use some of it to our advantage by building above the trees. We're gonna use these trees to make ourselves a tree house, which is a house in the trees the more you know. So I went for a sort of jungle fort here with a mix of a small little house with a little castle-y sort of turret on it and then I expanded out with a bridge across to another tree which I actually had to build. Maybe because I thought of it halfway through but if you found the perfect trees you could do this easily. There's trees everywhere so I'm sure you could find the perfect tree pretty easily. Now the great thing about houses like this is that you can just expand upon them. Add more platforms if you wanted to add like an enchanting area place or you wanted to add a huge chest room or whatever you want to add onto it. The possibilities are endless. I've never really built in a jungle biome before so this was a first for me but I really enjoyed it. I might actually build a house in the jungle next time I do a survival series. I think it'd be quite fun plus I like the idea of being able to expand upon it and just take over the jungle with all your builds just in every single tree. You will dominate the jungle. You will be the king of the jungle. As for the interior it was only a small space so I had the basics that you need but of course the expanding opportunities are endless. And the jungle fort is complete. Now you get up through this cute little staircase here, although there are many vines you can probably climb as well. A very quaint inside, but there's a ladder up here which leads you to the bridge across to here, but also you have a little lookout spot so you can look out across the jungle, see if anything's coming. But here is one of the expansions I did, so you have a nice little spiral staircase up and you've got plenty of room in here for stuff to be added and of course more lookout space. The jungle is massive and the possibilities are endless. Next up we have the ice plains biome. But Joel, there's nothing here. The rivers, they're all frozen. What if an army of snowmen invade my house? Well, yes, it may be true. The snowmen may come for you and invade your house. This is not a bad biome. Because it's kind of similar to a plains biome, which everybody loves for building, except icy. This is a very nice biome to build in. The frozen lakes, the trees, the snow, fallen on the ground looks magnificent in some places and I decided to build a brick cottage for this place. A very large oversized brick cottage with some dark oak wood which I never really used but I thought it fitted in very well here against the white of the snow. I wanted to make something that looked cozy and warm on the inside so when you come out of the snow you can sit by the fire with a cup of tea and drink cocoa at the same time. I don't know why you'd have two hot drinks, but you'd feel nice and cozy. And as you can see here, I start decorating the inside. I use some beams to make the ceiling not look so high to make it feel more cozy. And I also add a chimney and a fireplace with a fire roaring, whatever that means, inside it. <laughs> Plus I add a load of rugs, some seats, and I add a little wall for the separate room, which is the bedroom, of course. Although there is a big open door because this is a very open planned, modern, 
brick cottage. And here it is, looking very cosy indeed. As we head inside, we have a very homely, warm house for us to settle in, and the fire is lovely and warm. We've got a nice mantelpiece with the ender dragon you may have killed, plus some books if you want to do some reading by the fire. A few paintings around an armor stand, plus a lovely bedroom with an enchanting table, some more paintings, your secret chest, some leather pajamas for when you go to bed and it's a bit cold inside, and all in all, a very cozy cottage. With the riverside view, of course. Next up, we have the desert biome. But Joel, there's cactuses there. They can hurt you. Why would I want to live in a place with no grass? And where's the cover for when skeletons shoot at you? Well, I'll give you your cover. Here it is, the sand castle. Unfortunately, I messed up the time lapse on this one, so instead I'm going to show you around. Here is the castle with four matching turrets with one big center building and a wall that goes all the way around. And the good thing about this wall is you can actually walk all the way around it. So if you were getting invaded, you could shoot off the skeletons and stuff from here. There's a staircase down in there or it links into the main building. Now when you walk into this castle, you see on the left we have a farm where we are gonna feed the local villagers, plus some hay for horses, if we ever find any, and a tree. This is the precious tree. It's the only green grass in the area. We water it and keep it well. Plus over here we have the furnace area with a crafting table and an anvil, where our blacksmith, yes, we have a blacksmith, will work for us. The problem with castles is filling them up is very tricky. So inside we have this very nice red carpet, plus some armor stands and a grand staircase with place for other things in here. And on the top, we have more space, plus another floor, plus another floor. So it's kind of a basic castle at the moment, which is why I'm going to leave the map. Actually, all the maps in the description for you guys to be able to use them. They're all 1.12 at the moment, but should be able to be upgraded to 1.13 fairly easily. So feel free to try them out. But here is the sand castle. So there you have it. Plains biomes not looking so good, are they? Mr. Pig. He agrees as he's running away to that desert biome right now. But thank you so much for watching this video guys. Feel free to download the maps and improve the castle or any of the builds if you see fit. Or just use them for a survival world if you want to. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and comment if you did enjoy it. And let me know if you want me to do some other biomes such as the ocean in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.